I um, this whole this article, article number twenty one. We are now we have now reached twenty one out of twenty four. But we're going to come back and hit nineteen in a little bit. Um, article twenty one is about taking care of things, stewardship, right? Being the steward of things. Um, something is under our care. I'm going to read. If you have your confession uh, of faith in a Mennonite perspective, you're welcome to read along. I may I may cite a little bit here and there, but um, the first two paragraphs is, we believe that everything belongs to God, who calls us as the church to live as faithful stewards of all that God has entrusted to us. As servants of God, our primary vocation is to be stewards in God's household. God, who in Christ has given us new life, has also given us spiritual gifts to use for the church's nurture and mission. The message of reconciliation has been entrusted to every believer so that through the church, the mystery of the gospel might be made known to the world. It goes on to name a few points, but I think there's a really Im important idea is that the church has been called to do the work of reconciliation. And um, the work of reconciliation is, is difficult, right? Uh, oftentimes, uh, we Mennonites, we work hard to keep the peace, <laughs> but we actually don't do the work that's necessary to make peace. Um, keeping peace is pretending it's all okay. Um, and making peace is actually going underneath to find out what's really going on. Uh, what are the undergirdings? What's, what is preventing peace uh, versus just pretending it's okay? So this, this message of reconciliation that the church is called into is part of stewardship. It's the most complicated thing, and it only gets mentioned in one sentence <laughs> in this confession. Um, but it, it, is, it, is a, it is a thing that we are to steward, reconciliation, this meaningful idea of how we uh, work things through, how we come together. The rest of it, I feel, is, is more kind of uh, tactile, right? Uh, and that's where I, I plan to spend most of the time talking or examining. And I, I feel like we might have some ideas and comments. There may be some real space for exchange as we talk about this article today. Because uh, it's not just, the thing is, we are called to something that's not just care. We are called to the work of God. Um, we're not just called to be, so, so stewardship isn't, or creation care, isn't, doesn't just call the church to be an environmental nonprofit, right? It calls us into something more complicated, a relationship with God, and bringing the world into right relationship with God, Right? Um, it is the call to care about the earth, to care for the earth, to care for people, to care for each other. Um, sometimes we get, we mix up our ideas of what it means to be uh, simple, right? What, what is, you know, part of the idea that we hear is this call to change our lives, to take better care of things. And for me, that shows up in the concept of Lent, how we often practice Lent, um, when we were out in, in Pennsylvania, uh, we were connected to an organization called Rice and Beans uh, Month, I think. Lauren can correct me if I'm doing that wrong. But um, it was a group that, was ba that our friends had connection to um, out in Oregon. And they encouraged people during the time of Lent to take a month or 30, 40 days to just eat rice and beans. Um, every meal, because that's what a lot of people in the world, that's, that is a wonderful, healthy, nutritious meal um, that many people are sustained by. Um, but part of that, right, we can just eat rice and beans as this way of living simply. Um, but at some point that becomes this kind of struggle, you know, we're like, oh, we got to feel bad about how we spend and we have guilt and right, we all, Mennonites love guilt that showed up as we practiced the rice and beans month together. Uh, at Stahl Mennonite, as people felt bad, oh, well, I, I kind of had a steak last week, you know. Um, but the idea is that if we enter into this rice and beans month where we communally practice rice and beans, eating rice and beans, we would probably save a lot of money, 
right? Collectively, as a community, as this community, as a first world uh, community, uh, if we just ate rice and beans, we would probably reduce our grocery and dining out bills significantly. And the idea was that then that money would be shared. Um, and that's part of, that's one of the resources, um, that's one of the ideas and notions that's part of how we, uh, how stewardship works. It's, it's not just that we save money and live simply. It's that we're, the next part of it is we're sharing. We're being generous. So uh, we don't just live simply to live simply because we Mennonites are really good at thinking we're not, uh, you know, of, of denying ourselves. Does that make sense? Oh, we shouldn't have that. Oh, and, and, and that's common in many uh, church Christian circles, um, the idea that we, we deny ourselves um, just for the sake of denying ourselves. But I think that this stewardship article invites us into the idea of living simply so that we can share, right? Um, many of you would know that phrase that says we might live simply so that others can simply live, right? The amount of resources that we consume is far greater. So when I read through this confession, as I look at the, the, uh, the paragraphs, there are these points that I think a lot of us can relate to and understand. Um, there's first the idea of Sabbath and rest. And yeah, I, we picked the article of the Ten Commandments about Sabbath and rest um, for Scripture because that is about how we care for everybody, too. It's not just you need to rest. It's not this following of rules. It is about, um, it's not just, hey, don't mow the lawn. You, you shouldn't light a fire on the Sabbath. We don't follow the same rules that uh, the Jews of Jesus' time would have followed around the Sabbath. We, we also make sure that everyone we take care of uh, do a Sabbath rest. <clears throat> Uh, you would say there's some people who won't spend money on on uh, Sunday on the Sabbath because that would be asking other people to work on their Sabbath, right? So it's when you look at that commandment, uh, you might you might find yourself saying, "Oh, well, I'm asking them to do uh, work on the Sabbath." But um, in our modern worlds, we expect the electricity and water and internet to all be functioning quite well on our Sabbath. Um, so we often are all engaged in ways of, uh, of spending money on the Sabbath, so to speak, or asking people to work. Um, the points besides Sabbath and rest, right, we have our, there's a conversation in this confession about creation care. Um, there's conversation about the idea of a common purse or generosity, how we share together, right, that I talked about a little bit about. There's the idea of financial justice beyond just living simply, but what does financial justice look like? And then there's also the idea of simple living. So they all kind of interact with each other, but they're all slightly different. Um, uh, we, we found our way into the Mennonite church through Reba Place, which is a, an intentional community outside of Chicago in Evanston, Illinois. Um, they're huge. They've been around since the 70s, maybe earlier. Um, and they uh, have a common purse which is just unfathomable to most modern humans, uh, modern Americans especially, the idea that you would share all of your money together with a community. Um, but what was really fascinating about it was they, they didn't just share a common purse. That was the thing that really shocked us. But they would um, share common decisions. So if someone was um, taking a job change who was part of the community, they would work together with the community to understand why, why are you changing jobs? What do you think you need? What's going on? You know, it wasn't, and it wasn't just about, uh, I think a lot of us, you know, we want that rugged American spirit of independence, right? Um, but it was this idea that everything that we share in common, and this is the way it was explained to me, everything that we share in common, it's easier to allow that to be God's. So if we share a car with our church community, it's easier to let that car be God's instead of it being mine. My car, I like my car, it's comfortable, don't touch my car, you scratch my car. Right? Like that idea of mine sort of melts away a little bit and moves into more of a space of, of this, the undergirding idea of this confession that all things are God's and we are merely stewards of them. So it's very inspiring. Once I got over the shock of, oh my gosh, you... 
you don't have your own wallet, you know, kind of idea. You know, that this idea of sharing money together is very uh, shocking to the way we live. Um, I would just reiterate that I think that simple living is, is more than self-denial. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of touched on that point already. The other thing I'd, I'd name is um, the one the one other part of this I want to talk about and kind of ex- expand upon before I you know we take a pause and have some conversation about this is I want to think about financial justice that comes up in this confession. I think it's in uh, paragraph. Um, Paragraph, the, the second to last paragraphs. it says, As stewards of God's earth, we are called to care for the earth and bring it rest and renewal to the land and everything that lives on it. As stewards of money and possessions, we are to live simply, practice mutual aid within the church, uphold economic justice, and give generously and cheer- cheerfully. As persons dependent on God's providence, we are not to be anxious about the necessities of life, but to seek first the kingdom of God. We cannot be true servants of God and let our lives be ruled by desire for wealth. Wealth. It goes on in, in the last paragraph to say, we are called to be stewards in the household of God, set apart for the service of God. We live out now the rest and justice which God has promised. The church does this while looking forward to the coming of Jesus and the restoration of all things. But when we think about financial justice, uh, for me, this has been a driving factor in my understanding of stewardship. Um, when we vote with our dollars, right? When we buy something, when we spend money somewhere, we are supporting that, uh, that company or the thing that they're selling. Um, I think about, I, I've talked about this before, the idea that if a, if a company is closed on Sunday as a way to practice Sabbath, um, we're not fully practicing Sabbath unless those people who work there are paid enough that they don't need to go work somewhere else on Sunday. Does that make sense? We're just, uh, we're just, we're just doing the, the letter of the law but without the spirit of the law if our employees aren't making a wage that allows them to live on five to six days a week of, of labor. We, we need to pay them well enough so that they can rest. Uh, when we think about finances, uh, we, we can even think about the way some of us learn to pray the, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Jesus, in some versions, says, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are indebted to us, right? So, uh, and and the, the language, the Greek behind the Lord's Prayer can be translated as literal, forgive the money that we are owed, right? A call for us to be forgiving of, of financial indebtedness to ourselves. It is, uh, we, we also might think about what companies we buy from. Are the places that we spend money, are they good to work? Do the people like working there? Do they manufacture or make things w- in ways that take care of the earth, right? Um, sometimes I buy things in, that are made in America, not because, uh, not because of nationalism, but because I know that our environmental laws are a little bit stricter than the ones that are in China. Um, so some of the manufacturing that happens in other countries uh, is more destructive to the earth than the manufacturing that happens here, in addition to the shipping uh, and processes that, that also use resources. Um, and the other part would be the idea of how stocks and bonds relate to this, right? how, how our whole financial market, the way we're constructed. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of this, this group called the Yes Men. Um, they are a group of... I don't know if they're still doing it, but they've put out a couple movies. One's called The Yes Men Fix the World, and they're sort of corporate pranksters. Um, and they make some very large commentary on how our, how our country, how our financial system works. Um, does anybody know about the, the large union carbide disaster that happened in Bhopal, India? It happened in uh, 1984. Um, it was a massive chemical explosion. It killed lots and lots of people. Um, the company went out of business, but then it was bought by Dow Chemical. Um, so this company, um, you know, ruined a, a, a large section of earth and didn't really face any responsibility for the work 
the destruction that they caused. And, um, you know, I think that there's this underlying reality that stewardship is, comes with responsibility, right? Um, you know, when we talk about all these aspects, we have to be willing to face <laughs> the things that we've done. We have to be willing to be responsible for paying a little bit more because we know that this product does much damage to the earth or um, to be responsible for the messes we make as we try to steward and do this. So uh, the yes man, uh, yes men, this group, they, um, they sort of impersonate people from these large corporations. So they'll go out there and they'll create a website that says that they're Dow Chemical and that you can contact them for interviews. And, uh, you know, sometimes people just end up finding the wrong Dow Chemical website, which is the Yes Men's website. And um, they end up getting called. And there was this momentous uh, prank that they pulled, which happened on the anniversary of the Bhopal disaster, 20 years from the anniversary. And they were, one of these men was called and he pretended to be a representative of Dow Chemical. Um, and what he said was, when he got onto the BBC News, he said that Dow Chemical is accepting full responsibility and is, is funding the cleanup of the chemical disaster so that children no longer have to play in the waste. And he said, um, and we are going to send money over there to help people with the medical bills that some people will face for their whole lives. And we want to be accountable and responsible for the mess we made because we have made much, much money off of it and we want to be responsible. Can anyone guess what happened to their stock? It just tanked. It went way down. They lost a lot, a lot of money. A lot of people lost a lot of money when a company said, I'm going to be responsible and take accountability. Um, so the stewardship that we are called to in, in as God's as part of God's household um, is very difficult to operate with in the world that we all live in, because being responsible for the mess you made um, isn't necessarily how the world operates. So I invite you into this uh, into a time of reflection about what it means to be good stewards of of the world of all that God has given us. Um, which, as you hear in this, it, it, is, it, is, it is a large relationship. It's a relationship with humans, with the earth, with, with creatures, with other creatures. Um, and how are we called to be uh, responsible and respectful for that? So I invite you into this time of quiet reflection. And we'll come back and share.